Do you want to paint like this or this? Well, I'm about to show you that you don't need any special brushes to make those kinds of paintings. You have all the brushes that you need. We just need to know how to use them. And I'll explain just that in this video. So here I have a work of John Park. And I thought this would be a good example for us to reverse engineer the techniques and the brushes he used in this painting so that we can all learn from it and hopefully use those same techniques in our own paintings. But first, the biggest question that you actually need to ask yourself when choosing the right brush for the right situation is, do I make the shape myself or do i let the brush make it for me so what do i mean by that well firstly we have a spectrum between uh, what i would call the solids and shapes so here in this solid category we have brushes like this the one i'm using right now um, we have this kind of brush where it's like a chiseled marker this one as well uh, this round brush, so round brushes, or the default round brush, um, are inside this like solids category. And basically, this is what you would use to outline a shape or, yeah, outline a shape that you want to make with utmost accuracy. So if you want to draw a square, for example, or paint a square, that's a rectangle, but whatever, you'd have the easiest time doing that by using a solid brush. You can even erase um, some of the edges to clean it up. But if, uh, if you want to draw like a silhouette and make that as clear as possible, um, solids are the best way to go. And the other, um, on the other side of the spectrum, we have shapes. Shapes in this context is basically there are shapes within the brush that you're using. So here in my own brush category, um, the brushes that fall into this category are like this. See that? It's as if I'm not even drawing the shapes that I'm like painting anymore. I'm letting the brush do it for me. So that's what I mean by um, letting the brush do the work for you or you do the work yourself. Another example is something like this. Very, very um, rugged. Like you have these very interesting textures inside the brush itself another one would be this one this is a rock brush so you're not even painting the rocks you're just you know this is just like uh it looks very digital in this case because you're using photographs of actual rocks but you're not painting the actual shapes yourself letting the brush do that for you same thing with this one same thing with this one it's a gray yeah so um that's what i mean by shapes now um since we have these two extremes let's erase these there are actually um two more that i want to explain um as the in-betweens so first um over here like this is the center point right that's the center over here on the solid side we have what we would call um, textured using a solid brush is the equivalent of uh, in real life, using your brush, dipping it in like a bucket full of paint and painting with it. So it has no texture whatsoever. But um, using a textured brush, it's like just tapping or like dipping it only slightly um, in a puddle of paint. So it's like you're putting your brush in a, uh, in a color palette that you're using in that traditional sense. What I mean by that is... These brushes over here that have this kind of grit, slightly more textured. This one is a good example. And in this one, you actually see it's very similar to the brushes that um, John Park used over here. This on top is red. So it has like similar properties, but it's not the same brush. I, I can tell that. But you can use it the same way he did. And for solids, like this brush over here, that's what he would use over here in outlining the shapes of this um the trees at a distance and also these um twigs and branches and whatever if he wanted to create and design the shape 
um, he would use a solid brush. But if he wanted to let the brush do the work, say, for example, um, want to create this kind of texture or this kind of texture along the edge of the tree, like implying the bark or the roughness of the tree, you would use a more textured brush like this one or this one or this one. So yeah, yeah, he still cares about designing the shape itself, but not as much as a solid brush. Of course, he, he can also use like a solid brush to outline this shape and just erase it with a textured brush like this. So um, the edges of this uh, shape have that textured uh, quality to it. So you can also do that, of course, um, mixing and matching and subtracting different brush textures onto one another is also like a core part of having good brushwork in your painting. After that, um, the next one I want to point out is the one on the shapes family or on the shape side. Over here, let's make this smaller. Over here is what I would call the wash. And washes, much like in watercolor, is kind of like um, made to be used in uh, with very big and broad brush strokes. As an example, here are some wash brushes. So here, um, you can see I'm not really creating a really distinct shape, but I am creating lots of textures within the shape I'm creating. It's also like a grainy brush, or like kind of like a sponge. Of course, this the sponge brush. That's also a good one. It's kind of like smoky, but it's actually just, you know, watercolor grain inside the brush. So here, this is what you would use on things like this on the top. What John Park would use in creating the snow is using this kind of brush to imply those um, snow brush effect. Or you can also use it over here, you know, to imply some texture within that uh, puddle or ice. Basically, if you have, say, a rock and you want to add some sort of texture to that, you would use the grain brush for that, something like that. Very, very subtle. So it's either used for backgrounds or just implying some sort of um, texture in a previously untextured surface. So here you can use the smoky ones, grainy ones, mainly brushes that you would use on a bigger, with a bigger size. So now um, let's kind of test ourselves. For this monk over here, um, generally in, in this kind of area, you know, what type of brushes did John Park use? So the correct answer would be either solids or textured. As you can see, um, it has a really clear silhouette, really sharp edges over the shape of the robe and all that. But um, inside the robe, we have some interesting textures going on. But mainly, um, only only kind of subtle subtle textures like the ones we discussed in um, the textured category. So something like this for the folds and whatnot. Next up. What kind of brushes do you think John Park used in this area? Like those little twigs and whatnot. The answer would be either solids or shapes. Because shapes, actually, let's go to my shape category. Shapes can vary a lot and can have textures like these inside. That I would consider that like a shape brush or maybe something like this. So he can use these kinds of brushes to create this kind of texture. Or you can also use like a really small solid brush and design those textures himself, you know, and like scribble around to um, kind of show the twigs, kind of like his cross hatching with a pencil. So those two can definitely work. Those two approaches can definitely work for that type of um, type of situation. And for the last one, what kind of brushes do you think John Park used over here on the like shadow shapes of these rocks? The correct answer would be either solids 
or textured or more likely is he outlined the shapes of the shadows first something like that then actually went on with a textured brush then erased it using that brush to create those really nice textures but leaving the other side like this other edge over here really cleanly so this part of the shape that he made is still really clear really um sharp but on the top it's really rugged really textured so that's another way of going about um textures uh you can think about like these things in combination with each other so yeah that that's about it i just wanted to make a really quick uh guide on on how you should think about your brushes and like how to categorize your brushes i also have like categories over here which i made just fairly recently and i just wanted to share that with you guys there's also another one called blend but i don't really consider it like an actual category inside here because um it's kind of like just a wash but it interacts with the paint um already on the canvas i don't consider it as an official part on the spectrum but also another quick tip is when you're naming your bush categories you can put a number in front of it because this one is organized um alphabetically or alphanumerically so numbers go first and then um, a b c d to z so what you can do to make your bush categories more neat neatly organized is have a number before your actual category name so when you click this um it goes to one to five or like one to ten or how many brush categories you have you can also you know make categories within like these you can have like an in between between wash and shapes between textured and wash between solids and textured but these are just like the four main ones that i wanted to cover you can also make a category for different type of uh for different type of shapes say this one is kind of like uh, organic very streaky but there are also other shape brushes like what do you call that mechanical here so something like this this is a default brush but in krita which isn't really you can't really use it over here since it has a very distinct like texture and like pattern it looks very digital as well but for concept art it can work really nicely to imply some like um, mechanical shapes that you just want to fill in so there's also that you can make a category specifically for those things let me know in the comments if you would if you guys would like um, a copy of my own collection of brushes i don't really own them some of them are copied from other brush packs some of them are like just tweaked um default brushes and yeah uh and they're not really organized you can see like the thumbnail in the thumbnail in some of these are like you know not really well done not really named properly so this is like rx simple paint so it's not really um a neat or like an official brush category or like brush pack but if you guys are interested in that let me know down in the comments maybe i can you know make them a bit more official and make them a bit more prettier and like uh distrib distribute them on on like my grom road or whatever for free of course i don't really these aren't my brushes anyway so yeah let me know and i hope you learned something thanks for watching as a side note if you're interested in making your own brushes i already made a video about that and you can watch it over here or links in the description